Please, guys, welcome to the stage our uh, first guest here. <laughs> Legendary writer and uh, stage ascenter, uh, <laughs> Elliot S. Magan. I blew my knees because I was doing stuff like that anyway. Why don't you sit in the center? In the center? We'll get you, yeah. We'll put you in the center there. Right, center. Okay. Thanks for coming out and uh, yes. hanging out with us on a Monday. Oh, you're welcome. Welcome to our meat locker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you should try walking here. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty sure I can see my breath. <laughs> no, yeah, well, afterwards, <laughs> afterwards, you're going to pick out your cut of beef back there and we'll cook it for you. Yeah, thank you. All right. So, fourth day of the convention here. Elliot, how's it been for you so far? It's been fun. Yeah. It's been fun. I, I used to not like these things. Now I love them. I oh, don't really? know why. I think, I think I grew up or uh, stopped growing up. I don't know what it is. Do you, uh, do you have like a state count of how many you've gone to? Do you try to hit all 50 or? State count. I've got 42 states, but not necessarily for conventions. 43 now. Yeah. Okay, well, nice. Yeah. Yeah, but that's just because I drive a lot. Where are, you, where are you lacking? The north, the south? What do you need more of? I need Alaska, mm -hmm. Oregon, a couple of the northwestern states, but I... Okay. I'll get them. Yeah. Take a Pacific cruise. You could knock them all out or something right. like that <laughs> along the coast. So we have... Uh, you as, a, of course, a very, very distinguished writer in DC Comics. Um, prolific, I guess is a good word for it as well. Yeah. I don't know. It sounds good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we, um, when you got to, let's talk Superman. Okay. Uh, because that is a huge mythos that you have to bear on your shoulders. And so we're looking at your first reactions when they first gave it to you. You realize that you're kind of you have to have myth you're holding on to mythology here yep. and you have to have to preserve the mythology while at the same time trying to give the Extended. reader something new um so what goes through your mind like your first years and how as a writer now are you are you a little bit different well, there? okay i was 20 years old i didn't mm -hmm. know anything about anything um i knew it was mythology <laughs> i knew right. the the significance of that and no, I didn't know the significance of that. The significance is we build our civilizations on mythology. We have for thousands of years. So that's our mythology. And I didn't know how long I was going to be on it. Um, ended up writing the series for 15 or 17 years, something like that. Um, it was all month to month. I never had a contract on it. But um, I wanted to extend it. I wanted to make it significant to the period of time we lived in. Um, so I looked at mythology of other cultures and I, and I thought, okay, they put Hansel and Gretel in the woods <laughs> and mm -hmm. they put Zeus on a mountaintop. I'm going to put Superman in a city. So I did things like cities with haunted, uh, haunted subway systems. And um, I just tried to, to use ancient themes in a contemporary setting. Right. So we created this metropolis thing. Um, and it was basically New York in the daytime. Mm -hmm. Gotham was New York at night. Right, yeah, pretty, pretty much. Yeah. Um, and New York was an amazing place in the 70s. Uh, it it kind of still is, but not as amazing. Um, it's e it's, it was easier to amaze a 70s kid, I think, than it is to amaze you guys, for example. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Well, that's another thing. It's like, how, um, how do you keep Superman relevant to the changing generations. I mean, that, that was obviously an issue you had to co t uh, cover as the decades rolled on. And even today, it seems to be harder. We see, we see the movies are trying to make him darker. We're seeing DC is relaunching him a couple of times with different costumes yeah. and personas. So yeah, different costumes, different attitudes, different... You know, they, they try to make Superman stories about power. Mm -hmm. um, they're not. And, and a lot of people just don't get that. They don't understand that. Um, Superman has all the power in the world. And every Superman story that works has to start with the premise, um, what do I do in this given situation if I've got all the power in the world? It's not about who wins. It's about what side you take. Right. It's about a moral and ethical choice. And if you understand that that's what the story's about, 
then it becomes as exciting as anything else. You can blow stuff up. You can throw things in volcanoes. You can right. make a lot of action. You can have fist fights. But, but that's not what the story is about. It's the product. That's the product of the story. But what it's about is the choice. Mm -hmm. And that's not necessarily true of a Batman story or an Iron Man story. Um, does that make sense? If you elaborate a little bit more about the choice, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I see it. Yeah. 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 Right. yeah. I mean, every 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 situation is a different choice. Uh, my first Superman story was about the guardians of the universe um, trying to explain to Superman that he was a he was an impediment to human culture, to human uh, uh, advancement. Mm -hmm. And they just planted the idea in his head. Um, and, and everything I wrote after that with the character was um, a way, the way he addressed that idea. Um, yeah, it was my first story. And it was the only one that didn't have Clark Kent in it. A uh, Superman story should always have Clark Kent in it. Mm -hmm. Because that serves as a counterpoint. Clark is his demon. <laughs> really? That's an yeah, that is yeah. an interesting way it's of looking his, at it. It's his, uh, it's his preoccupation. Uh -huh. it, yeah, Superman loves Clark Kent. Um, the way you love your hobby. Okay. The way you love stamp collecting or pop music or whatever. That, that is a really interesting take because I've never heard, I've, you know, obviously alter ego, people call him a, a mask that Superman behind, uh, hides behind, but as a hobby that yeah. he builds and molds yeah. and... yeah. That's really, really good. Yeah. You should write comics. I should. <laughs> I'm writing books now. <laughs> <laughs> How is that schedule? It's a little bit easier of a timeline, do you think? The deadlines going into well, books Well, I don't now? have deadlines. I just work for myself. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I haven't, haven't published a book in about 15 years. I wrote one. It, it's never taken me more than four months to write anything, whether it's a book or a story or, or, or what. Screenplay, and I wrote this book called "Not My Closet," which is about real people who don't wear spandex necessarily um, or fly. And I've never written one about actual humans before. It took me about four years oh, okay. and uh, five drafts, and an agent kept telling me, "Make it, give it more action and adventure." And I say, "That's not what the story's about." Right. And he says, "Well, action adventure is an easier sell for you." I said, "Well." I can sell that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> What's your job? So we're gonna we're gonna bring it out on Amazon pretty soon. Oh, okay, great. Yeah, and I'm gonna reissue uh, Miracle Monday, which uh, is a book I a Superman book I wrote 40 years ago. Oh wow. Yeah. So we'll see what happens. Um, do you feel uh, you know touching on that because you wrote uh, you wrote a few episodes as well of uh, some various 90s cartoons throughout. Uh, the 90s. The one that stuck out uh, when I was doing a little bit of research is that you wrote for uh, the 90s Spider-Man cartoon. I did. You, uh, the episode that stood out was Sins of the Father. It was episode two. And rather than really tackle, um, you know, whatever baddie was happening in that yeah. uh, thing, you, uh, it would get, and I remember the, when I read the, when I read the episode, I was like, I remember that one it stuck out there. He, it was basically, he was visiting kind of a little girl, kind of inspiring hope. And it really was, like you said, even with Spider-Man, about choice, just like with Superman here. Uh, and it really seems to be uh, a theme that you resonate in, uh, I guess. in a lot of your scripts there. I guess that's why it worked to have me write Superman. <laughs> I, I, I don't like making people bad. Right. I don't like damning people. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, when I wrote Superman, I always, my favorite character was always Lex Luthor because I identified with him. Um... You're always the hero of your own story. Right. And Lex is convinced that he's the good guy. Absolutely right. You know? He's... Um, so I tried to do that with Spider-Man. It kind of worked. <laughs> <laughs> right. But I, I think it works better with Superman. It just does. A absolutely. Because, yeah, there's something, there's something about Superman. Because yeah, Spider-Man, I think, I think, has so many doubts going about him. I think there's a yeah. lot of grades with Spider-Man. Yeah, Superman doesn't worry about that stuff. He's able, yeah, he's able to see things a little bit more black and white in that. But that's interesting what you said about the, the Lex Luthor character. Yeah, you that's me. Yeah, you see that with, <laughs> and you see that with a with lot of, uh, <laughs> you see that with a lot of, even in history, just very highly intellectual, highly uh, capable people 
they just get so frustrated that people aren't doing this grand plan that they have, which they know is the right plan, and then they right. end up getting a little bit drastic. So that's an interesting way of, again, the interesting way of looking at Lex Luthor as, yeah, just kind of a highly capable character that just can't yeah, stand. Yeah, Lex is the greatest man in the world, mm -hmm. except he happened to be born at a time where there's a Superman. Right. So he didn't have the option of being the greatest conqueror or the greatest scientist or the greatest industrialist in the world because somebody could always do that better than he could. Mm -hmm. So he decided to be a bad guy. He's better at being a bad guy than anybody else. Exactly. So he got his trophy that he needed. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. He's the best. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm Lex for maybe three or four hours a day on my best days. All right. <laughs> Just... <laughs> if I sit down and write and I'm really, really brilliant for that minute, I'm Lex. Okay. Um, I wanted to touch a little bit too on um, on your uh, you're heavily involved or were heavily involved in politics and you still are pretty heavily involved yeah, pretty in much. politics. Yeah. Uh, you uh, very uh, involved in the Democratic Party. Um, did you ever find a lot of your Democratic principles, uh, kind of just your your overall pol political ideas, being incorporated into your books or your your comics? Yeah, by accident. By accident, of course. Yeah. Yeah, you and don't. Just, I, I got accused of being relevant when I first started writing these things. How dare you? My first story was about Green Arrow deciding to run for mayor of Star City. Mm. And I'm still waiting for, you know, who is it, CW to send me a check? But, <laughs> um, or even call. But uh, <laughs> yeah, you don't incorporate that stuff on purpose. Mm -hmm. You tell your story and uh, um, if it, if it evolves logically in your mind, it's going to evolve logically in the story. Mm -hmm. um, why? Where's an example? I, I, I did this Superman story once that was about the New Hampshire primary. Okay. And it, it's just I lived in New Hampshire at the time, and all these presidential candidates were like jogging through my backyard. Um, really. I mean, uh, Alan Cranston, uh, Gary Hart, they were all hanging out with me or my father-in-law or somebody. All right. Um, so I wrote a story about it, about somebody trying to undermine the New Hampshire primary. I don't know if my ideology popped into there, but it, it, it certainly was present. Right. And yeah. It definitely has an impact there, yeah. yeah. Which, again, it goes back to the, that theme of choice, I guess, too, with the yeah. whole... Yeah. Yeah, you have to make a, you have to make a decision. Mm -hmm. And if you've got all the power in the world, you have to make the right one. <laughs> That's the conflict. Right. It's all man against himself. Does that make sense? It does. <laughs> <Good>. It does. <laughs> <laughs> you got this, Leva? You following too? Oh, I'm totally following. I, I, yeah. yeah. Um, so, you go, so that being said, you going to Philadelphia in a couple of weeks? No. You going to hang out with anybody? No. No. <laughs> no, I got a friend who's a delegate to the Republican convention. Oh, yeah. Um, I told him just keep his head down. Where is that going to be this year? It's uh, Cleveland. Cleveland, okay. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, he took the publicity photo we did for this, uh, for the publicity for, the, for Supercon. Right. And he wanted me to smile, so I said, say something funny. He said, President Trump, and I giggled. <laughs> Came out good. <laughs> um, I, I, well, I, you know, just to, not, not to get too much into politics, obviously, but um, the way the... Um, Cause, but I do want to talk to you since you are a, a student of politics. A, uh, the way things are shaping up here on both sides of the both sides of the lines here. Uh, do you think we are looking at kind of a repeat of the 1968 conventions, where there's definitely going to be some changes in party lines, or even some meltdowns in some uh, at these conventions here? You know, I don't. I don't know. I mean, I, what what's going on? You really want my point of view here? Oh, absolutely. Okay. So what's going on with the Republican side is that they're saddled with a candidate who can't win unless he's unopposed. Right. Um, so they're trying to upend um, the Democratic candidate by whatever means necessary. Mm -hmm. uh, so if they upend the De if somehow they blow Hillary out of the water, right? Uh, the next president is uh, is uh, Mark. Uh, Mark, what's his name, from the Libertarian Party? Oh, Gary Johnson. Gary Johnson. Gary Johnson. Gary right? Johnson. Yeah, he's the next president. He's <laughs> much more popular than Trump. 
He's um, actually gaining. Yeah, I think he's uh, pulling at 10% right yeah, now. Yeah, and it's a good thing because mm -hmm. uh, that means there'll be a there'll be a second party if this thing ends. Mm -hmm. um, now you want you want every party to nominate the best person they've got, right? Because that's what everything depends on. I mean, Hillary's a better candidate because there was Bernie. Mm -hmm. um, I, she really has like had to evolve with yeah. uh, with keeping yeah. up with that. Somebody had to be there to say, this is what you need to stand for. Mm -hmm. And she says, oh, okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, and that's the way it's always been. The Republicans mm -hmm. temper the Democrats. The Democrats temper the Republicans. Um, if somebody's extreme in some sense, mm -hmm. that's a product of the past. Um, they're undermining their own institution. Right. So that's what I think. Well, Republicans really had it a lot harder this year. I mean, there's just, I mean, that pool is, I mean, whether, whether you're Republican or not, that pool was just a very unimpressive yeah. uh, lineup there. So it'd be interesting. Um, do you ever think that one day the third parties will be able to participate in national debates? Do it you think we're moving been. toward? It always has. The Republicans were a third party in, 19, in 1856, mm -hmm. in 1860. Um, uh, you know, they, the Republicans are made up of Whigs and, and, uh, and Federalists. Right. Um, so uh, people think the first candidate of the Republican Party was Lincoln. It was actually John Fremont, mm -hmm. who uh, pretty much settled California. Yeah, the Bear Flag Republican, yeah. John, John C. Fremont, right. Yeah. And so it would have been interesting to have him as president. Mm-hmm. Well, the, the uh, slavery issue would have been definitely uh, discussed quicker yeah. with Fremont. Yeah. He was, a little, he was a way more radical than Lincoln ever was yeah. on that. I'm sorry, Leva. No, this is great. I'm actually totally fascinated by More this. More bloodshed, so. yeah. <laughs> so I, I'm enjoying listening, actually. Okay. What else you got? Well, you, um, it says also that uh, doing, you know, doing research on you, uh, like you do. Yeah. Because, you know, journalism is just another form of stalking, apparently. These yeah, days. it yeah, is. It really I, got is. A, I, I studied journalism when I was mm -hmm. in college. Um, you sometimes do uh, lectures at high schools, universities, it says. Uh, do you still do that, or was that... Uh, Not a lot, but... Uh, what were you usually talking about with them? Well, I talk about comics, okay. mostly. Um, <laughs> talk about mythology. And, uh, uh, you know, I said before we build our cities on mythology, um, little lies. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. Little untruths. Uh, Socrates didn't... Socrates had a had a die because he didn't believe in the literal truth of the mythology of his time. Mm -hmm. um, that's why we separate church and state. Right. Um, that's why we separate fantasy from reality. Mm -hmm. But um, when the legend becomes more vivid than the reality, the legend becomes true. Oh, absolutely! I, yeah, I, I, I'm always. I have a friend who uh, wrote Superman before I did, and he hated the character. Okay. And uh, he became the Batman editor. He did Batman for 30 years. And every time I talk to him, I try to explain that Superman is a more realistic character. He really is. Um, it's possible that somewhere out there, there are powers and intelligences. And I'm not talking about religiosity. I'm talking about real... Um, I'm talking about physics. I'm talking right. about cosmology. Um, it's much more likely that a Superman could come to Earth and participate in our community uh, than a Batman could push himself beyond a human limit and never give up. That's just not something humans do. That's true. You know? There's no Batman. We, right. got, we got, what, 500 billionaires in this country? Mm -hmm. And they're all losers. <laughs> None of them got to be Batman. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're right, yeah. It would be more likely for us to meet a extra extraterrestrial life than a billionaire fighting crime for decades. Yeah. Going out in the street breaking heads. I right. Mean, come on, leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> that is the, it's true. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> That's my point of view. Um well, Denny O'Neill doesn't believe me. <laughs> <laughs> I had a feeling it was Denny O'Neill yeah. when you said I was like, he's talking about yeah. Denny. Yeah. Uh, where do you see the, the future of comics? Because the digital age is making sales less and less impressive. I was talking to Keith Giffen 
yesterday, and he's saying nowadays, you know, you're a bestseller if you sell 60,000 copies in the nation. Yeah, we used to cancel those. Right. That's what, you know, he was saying exactly that. And, um, you know, do you think that eventually you would go to maybe like a, companies would go to like a monthly Netflix style subscription where you pay per month, and then you could get the whole category? Catalog yeah, for the month? Do you think that is a possible it avenue? It depends on what marketing approach works. I mean, mm. we got this thing, Comixology, um, which is trying to digitize everything. Right. Um, I think the bigger question is what happens with copyright. Mm. Um, there was this guy, A.J. Liebling, he used to be a, you studied journalism. Mm -hmm. He was a sports writer and a news writer in the 30s and 40s. What he said was, the power of the press is guaranteed only to those who own one. Mm. And now we all own one. Um, all of us. We've all got superpowers. Um, the notion of copyright is going to have to change. Right. Uh, and, inevitably, and it already is. Um, the notion of work for hire mm -hmm. is pretty much dead. It just doesn't know enough to fall down. Um, I, comics have been around since the cave drawings. Right. Uh, Jim Steranko said the first time somebody drew a, a horse on a cave wall with five legs to indicate that it was running, mm -hmm. um, the critics hated it, but that was a comic book. Um, representa representational art. It's, it's, it's not significant how it's presented. It's significant that it exists. Right. So... A lot of people are publishing books as e-books. Mm -hmm. um, publishers, conventional publishers, are actually selling paper. I'm not interested in paper. <laughs> you want okay. it on paper? Here, have a have a book that's uh, that's uh, um, printed on demand, or print it on your print it on your uh, digital printer for some reason. Right. But um, it's ideas that are the significant thing, and uh, the the. The nature of the presentation is what changes the copyright mm -hmm. notion. It's not the presentation itself. Ideas are ideas. And they're real things, you know? They're, they're a physical manifestation of your, of your, uh, of your brain. Um, there's actually a chemical change in your brain when, when you think something. Mm -hmm. um, that doesn't exist on paper. And uh, it certainly doesn't exist in the sense that it's owned by someone. So, uh, yeah, things are changing. I'm interested to find out how and how they shake down as much as anybody else. Right. And I'll, uh, I'll shove in one direction or the other as the fancy strikes me. <laughs> <I guess. laughs> um, and I guess um, our last thing, just to, to keep, continue with the, uh, the DC lineups here, just your, uh, honestly your opinion in the future here of comics. Um, I don't know how much you keep up anymore with the storylines. I don't. But they're doing another reboot. Yeah. All right. Um, I guess I keep up enough to know the reboot. reboot. Um, do you think? I mean, do you think these so? Um, what, what, what I'm looking for here. So frequent of reboots because they just had one. Yeah, the contraction of time between <laughs> between retakes, between retcons, is um, it looks like desperation. Mm-hmm. Um, I, that's all I can say. I mean, I. Uh, it didn't. We know who these characters are. Right. We're proud of these characters. They're part of our culture. Um, but it's the culture that determines who they are. It's not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if, if as long as Warner Brothers can turn out cool Superman and Batman stories, Warner Brothers can keep reaping profits from them. But right. to say they own these guys, eh, that's a little dicey. Right. Right. You know. They screw up. We have to go somewhere else. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Elliot. Well, thank you so much for being on here and giving kind of your insight for oh, everything. You're welcome. Uh, any upcoming, um, like I said, upcoming ideas or novels that you were working on right now? That oh, well, I finished. Not my closet. We're we're figuring out where to how to how to blow it out the door. Okay. Um, I wrote a book uh, 40 years ago called Superman Miracle Monday. All right. Yeah. I'm in the process of uh, of uh, uh, reissuing that. And they could uh, find those on? Uh, on Amazon or on uh, my website, magan.com. Okay, great. Um, and I'm working on a time travel trilogy. Oh, great. Three novels. Um, 
The first one is called Saving Lincoln. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And I'm not going to tell you the plot because nobody's thought of it before. It's cool. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, Elliot S. Megan. You're good. Have a good day. I just want to say I wish I would have uh, been in a college lecture you were given because I would have loved it. I would have absolutely yeah. loved it. They wouldn't. They would never I'll incorporated the, the yeah <laughs> comics and 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 mythology like that. So I just I wish I wish you were in my school. <laughs> you go to school. I was Murray State University oh, yeah? in Kentucky. Okay. I'm a Kentucky girl. <laughs> my my daughter-in-law is a Kentucky girl. Oh really? Yes. Her uh, her father has a farm. Geez, south of Lexington, and he grows bees and uh, and. Uh, Whatever it is that you make bourbon out of. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Good. Well, thank you so much.